Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for stopping by and joining us. Okay, so... I finished up that little Cody. Eight horsepower that had a busted transom bracket. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh... So I will take that broken piece, I still got to take the side clamps off of it, then I'll take it up to my welding buddy who has all the stuff to weld up. Aluminum, 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 and I'll have him see if he can't weld that back up for me, and then I'll put it back together. And then you say, why are you going to do that? You already replaced it with one that wasn't broken. Oh, could there going to be another one come in here? You understand? There'll be another one come in here that needs that exact same part. So I'll have that one welded up, put it all back together. Out in them parts pile. Because there'll be another one. That I know. So, you say, well, it might be a while for you to have another one of them little eight horse cuties come in here. Well, I just so happen to have another one right here. I don't know if it's an eight horse. It could be. It could be a six horse. I do believe that it is a Belgium made motor because of the choke thingy. It's a little same thing only different on this one. That's not like that one, which was kind of like that little three horse that's made in Belgium but different but I think that's what it is I can't find a uh, the little Welch plug that has the numbers and I can't find the little transom clamp sticky metal sticky either or that gives me a year model on it but I'm gonna show it to you nonetheless and then we're gonna do a quick let's get the facts the facts only the facts Nothing but the facts. Um, that was from an old police show of some sort, if I remember. Showing my age here. But anyway, it's a cutie. Let's look. It's pretty clean, too. And so far, without doing a rundown facts check, sorry about that, I'm dropping the tripod. So you can see the little cutie. Ain't that a cutie? Um, yeah, this... This primer, it's a, a primer, not a choke. And then it's got this piece that sticks all off here that everything kind of hooks to. So, and if I remember right, that's off those Belgium deals. Might be wrong, but in here normally is one of those metal aluminum plugs that tell me the model number or it's generally right here or sometimes flat right there and I'm not seeing one there's looks like there used to be a sticky it's kind of discolored over here but I, I can't be sure that's where it was either but it tells you right here mix it 100 to 1 wrong never ever never ever don't do that. And if you're doing it, stop. 50 to 1. So, I don't see no identification on it. So, um, it's either a 6 or an 8, I'm guessing. Maybe a 6. But the throttle handle's all... Um, froze up on it. And here's the bonnet that came with it. So it don't help because it's been spray my painted. I can see a little bit of something right in there. Um, gosh, there's some stuff in there, but I can't. I can't make heads nor tails out of what it was. Is not was is. 
So that's the hood. But the like I said, the throttle cable here is froze up. Um, so I can't move that in and out. But I can move it here, but it's a little sticky there too, but not real bad, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I can I'll, I'll be able to start it and see what it's going to do if it has sparky. So the first thing we're going to do is get these spark candles out of here. We get them out. Put us a sparky checker on there. And, like I said, it's not a real overly salty, dirty little motor. It has the L77 JC4s. Bofen up L77 JC4s. Um, they look like they were both firing, as best I can tell. On the old candles. So, let's put the Sparkum spiders on here and see if we get some fire! Boom, 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 boom. Let's see. Let's move that. Let's put it, will it grab right there? I think it'll grab right there. No. Gotta find a place for the old clip to the grab. And let's see. So, which two is it? Which two? Which two? Gosh, I can't even tell. I can't even tell. So it's those top ones right over there. That should be showing us some fire! Right here. I think. Ooh, I see nothing. Oh, it ain't got the it ain't got the MOB clip in there. So I have to put one in there. You know, at the end of the at the end of the tiller handle here. Let's see now. I got one in there. Right up in there. I see double spark. So we got good hot sparkum times two. So now, so now, let's do the compressionis. You want to stun us? I speak out of Spanish. Let's do the bottom first. Yeah, I don't know what horsepower this little engine is. Okay, so we are on the zero on the spark, or excuse me, on the compressionis. Four good ones. Four good ones. And that's showing me 122, 122 or so. So that's good. That's nice. Damn. So this is kind of like the defining de facto because you got good hot spark and you got one cylinder that's got 122. So if this one checks out to 100 and something, guess what? It's gonna be a rana. Four good ones. Ooh, look at that. About 122, 23. So that tells me we got some good fire, sparky. We got some good compression. So, so far all we've got is a motor that probably has a frozen up throttle cable, and that's about all. I'm gonna squirt the tri flow in there. And you say, what? And I say, because this engine hasn't been running goodness knows how long. And that'll hopefully 
once I put the 50 to 1, not the 100 to 1. You know what I do with these motors when these folks bring them in? I don't care. I do it. I take the old razor blade scraper and I scrape that 100 to 1 off. Because somewhere after it leaves here, leaves me, somebody might not know. And they will say, Oh, you're supposed to mix it 100 to 1. And then they will commence to destroy in this power hit. So I take the little old. I show you. I show you. See this here. This is the answer to the hundred and one. I show you. I show you. Somewhere. I'm gonna show you. My microphone is falling off. Does that make sense? I don't know. See that? Can you see? Right there? Can you see it, man? I can see it. It says right there. 100 to 1. And what I do is I take this and I go and I make that say I make it say nothing and then I tell the folks it's 50 to 1 don't be paying attention to that so now we got that off there and we have now insulted California. I don't know if it's true, but that's what I heard that they put that on there so they could keep selling these in California IA by sticking that little sticker on there. They cut their emissions by 50%. I don't know if it's true, but I know this it don't belong having itself at no I can't remember if I tighten them 100 to 1 least it don't round this here little shop round this shop it's going to be 50 to 1 and that's just how it is and what I'm looking for now As you can see, on my fat fiener there, I got some dielectric on that big old fat fiener. And I like to put some just around on that ceramic. It makes it easier to get that boot off if I got to take it. And then just a little, little on the tip. Just a little. Can't hurt. So we've got a, a throttle that's all goobered uh, stuck that we're going to have to cone tin with. But, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the tank. Somewhere right in there. And we will hook up some fuel and squeeze and see if it goes in okay felt a little tight going in that carburetor maybe and that don't feel good either this uh, primer should be it feels like it's about half plugged the hose going into the yeah it, it's plugged let me go ahead and pull this off real quick now I don't know if you can see it but right there's a little nipple going into the intake right down in there. Right where my big old fat fiener is. I'm going to stick a, a high E guitar string in that. That's what I'm going to do. You think I'm kidding. I ain't kidding. See, I just changed out a set of guitar strings on my Simon and Patrick acoustic guitar. 
And I saved them strings, and I put them like that. And I'm going to take this high E one right here. Could be a B string, but I think it's a high E. You guitar pickers get it. You know what I'm talking about. And for the non-guitar pickers, you just got to trust me. Well, anyway, I'm going to see if I can get my little needle on noses. My needle noses. And take this string. I, I like this one right here, actually. Boy, these needle nose ain't very good. They won't even clamp on it. And I'm going to see if I can stick that down in there. Because I do believe that is plugged up. Because I didn't feel... I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Pull that thing completely out of there. Pull that guitar string out of there. I was hoping with these longer strings I could get down in that. Let's see. There we go. Yep, she's plugged, definitely. Well, let me get a bigger guitar string. Come here, you. Let me see. It feels like it's plugged, and if it's plugged, who knows what else we got plugged in there. There. Got it in there. Now let me take my needle nose and reach down in there and see if I can't unplugish that. Whoops, there that one went. Well, let me try something else then. I'm going to fire off my compressor. I'll be right back so you don't have to listen to the noise. Okay, I tried to stick that needle in there. I don't know how successful I was, so I'm going to take compressed air. See if that helps any. And you should be able to see, whoop, there's plenty of gas coming through the primer. I'm just not sure if it's making it into the cabby. And if it ain't, that just means i got to take everything off and clean it up. Because, but I was hoping it'll at least fire and run. Let me see if it's still, yeah, it still feels completely blocked. I can't even pull that out. Oh well, let me see if it'll run anyway. I'm not even sure gas was getting in the carb. Alright, so that's that. So that ought to be... Let's see what happens. We tried to fire there. But looks like we're going to be doing carburation. Where you at? Is that froze? Well, something must be. Hmm. There it goes. Now is that going to open? Yeah. Yep. She ain't getting no gas. You can see the smoke. It tried to pop on that uh, tri flow. But I don't think it's getting anything in there. I can't, I can't prime it. I can't prime it. That means it's not getting gas. So, time to take off a carburetor. Now, if you're taking off this air silencer and all, and you're going to pull this primer handle off, there's a little bitty screw that goes in there and screws right into that brass shaft there. Don't lose that screw when you take it out and drop it down in there because it's made out of stainless, so you're not going to be able to go in there with a magnet and get it. So be careful. Don't lose them that little screws them. Don't lose them the screws them. So, bar. Now, let's see if we can get her to pop with the tri flow like this. Most of them spill out, but you never. 
You never know. Let's see what happens. She's a runner. Actually, like I said, a pretty clean little example of this motor. Um, that carburetor <laughs> had to blow a bug off the camera. Um, the old carburetor will clean up. I'll need to pop it off, clean it up, and uh, unplug that intake primer hose. And then replace that throttle cable. And it should be squared away. So... Let me get a few things together and we'll get that old throttle cable off of there and that carburetor. You bet. It's name that tune. Trying to make some sense of it all. But I see it makes no sense at all. Is it cool to go to sleep on the floor? But I don't think I can take anymore trying to make some sense of it all but I can see it makes no sense at all is it cool to go to sleep on the floor but I don't think I can take anymore name that dude now after you take the the grip off, it has these two little nipples that you push in. I just use a Phillips screwdriver and pull a little bit on this side, take a Phillips screwdriver and pull on that side. You unscrew the throttle screw at the end and then just twist the cap off. Then once you get everything unhooked here, you're going to have this little wire clip in here. Um, they call it a, a cable retaining clip. The manual says remove it. And the best way I've found to do it is I just take a little punch about like that, wiggle it down in there, and once you get it in there, you just pry it out. Um, sometimes I tap it down in, in there with a, in a, with a hammer, just little taps, and get that wire coming out of there. And then once you get one side out, you just take your needle nose 
and get the other side. And that's kind of what it looks like. And if you want to put it back in there, it says put a new one in there. You can certainly take this one and just reshape it with your needle nose. Kind of like so. And you can reuse it even though the manual says don't do it. But you can take it and just bend it back into shape. You know. You know. Till it looks about like that. It don't have to be perfect. It just holds the cable up against there. If you want to stick it back in. So. Then we got to get this cable. Ugh. come out of this and that's more prying and wiggling and prying and wiggling and this one's you know fairly salty and this cable technically on this one I could just cut it but I'm not gonna I'm gonna pull it out of there because it's a common slowly. Come on, the wires are in my way. And there it is. And now you've got to untwist these end pieces if you're not going to just cut it. But this one's junk anyway. But either way, I'll need these for the new cable most likely. So you just unscrew these bits and pieces parts. Once you get these off, you can feed this cable down and through there. And it comes out up under there. And once you get the fat pieces off, you can just feed it out there. But like I said, if you're, you know, if you're you're doing this job, chances are your cable's froze or ruined or broke, so you can just snip it off and pull it out of there a lot easier. Which is what I'm going to do, and I'll be back. Diablo!
is that a pretty sunset or what? Huh? Ain't that pretty? Yeah, it's a pretty sunset. Well, as you can see, stuff is just pouring in here. Um, so, um, I've already got my next little outboard victim lined up, I think. And uh, I chose it because it'll be a good segue from this little uh, 8 horsepower with the stuck uh, throttle cable. Um, this next motor I'm going to do has basically the same problem, or excuse me, the same symptoms. I can't, when I turn the throttle, I can't get it to move at all. And so, even though it has the same symptoms, the problem is not the same. So, it has the same symptoms, but a different problem. So, I thought it would be a good segue into, uh, into this motor. So, I've got to get it ready for a customer coming up from Idaho next month. So I need to get it done and uh, being that it's very similar to what I just did but completely different, we're going to take a look at that and uh, get on that one. And as you could see in the vid, stuff's pouring in here and like I always said, you never know what is going to show up at this little shop. So it's getting a little long on this one, so that's going to be a wrap. And that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboard with your host, Cody Bass.